to Anything Goes. I'm your Five Wing Four host, Madison. And I'm your Nine Wing One host, Caden. And this is a and podcast about... Oh, yeah. We still can't get it right. <laughs> and this is a podcast about the Enneagram. Um, you can, if you don't know what that is, go back and listen to our other episodes. Yeah, we've detailed every type, and we have an introduction episode on it, so... Very informative. Um, if you don't want to listen to the other episodes and don't know what it is and want to email us or do know what it is and want to email us, email us slash tweet at us. Our email is anything goes at gmail.com. Our Twitter is at anything goes. Make sure to check us out on other platforms. Um, we are on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Apparently there is a new um, Amazon podcast that we're on. Um, and if you are listening on Apple, be sure to uh, leave us a review. And if you're listening on YouTube, please comment and like. Some disclaimers to get out of the way before we get too far into it. Um we're not safe for work, so please put headphones in if you're in your office. Unless you work in an office like mine, in which case my boss regularly listens to explicit comedy, and it's wonderful. <laughs> we are very gay um, and very LGBT friendly, so if you don't like that, please leave. <laughs> I don't have time for it. I just don't. <laughs> Good. Good, good. Mm -hmm. um, we are not professionals. Um, we have not been trained or gone to any workshops, uh, at least not yet. Mm -mm. Um, we're also not Christian. Um, so we don't really touch on any of the spiritual a aspects of the Enneagram, or at least we might mention it, but we don't dive deep into it. Right. All right. So um, we have a running segment where each video we ask um, the question of the month and uh, the next episode we answer it. So last month's uh, question was, what types of games uh, does each type like? Um, and we have some answers here. We didn't get responses from every single type, so some of them are guesses. Um, the first one, we'll start with ones. Um, I did get a response from a one for this, which um, this one likes Webkins or liked Webkins when she was little, um, Animal Crossing and like Sims and basically any game that feels like she's playing God. So that totally tracks with the majority mm -hmm. of my childhood with my one sister. <laughs> yeah. Also, Monopoly. Mm. Like Monopoly ruined our relationship for a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. see, the thing is, I want to I don't know where I want to place Monopoly on the board, because I feel like every type has its own relationship with Monopoly. I feel like that's a whole question mm. of the mind. As a nine, my relationship with Monopoly is negative. Yeah. Fuck capitalism. <laughs> um, so um, here you I'll, I'll give you twos. OK, twos. I have a theory. Unconfirmed, but I have never met a two that does not go hard at parties. Whether they drink or not, twos are party animals. So, therefore, I think that they like party games. So, um, two truths and a lie, or like truth or dare, never have I ever, or even like beer pong. Anything that's like, it's about the, the sociable, you have a lot of people involved. And you're all sort of, like, hanging out and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Um, For threes, anything they're good at. Like, whatever game that they know they can win and impress people with. Also, a uh, previous question was, do threes like poker? Or are you good at poker? And the general consensus for threes that know how to play is that they are pretty good and that they do like poker. So, um, threes also get poker. <laughs> exactly. Fours were kind of the same answer as like twos, but truth or dare or never have I ever. And the reasoning behind this is that they can give 
like as much information as they want to while still looking a little bit mysterious they get like some spotlight and attention and also get to like sort of engage and, and blend in with the the rest of what other people are doing mm-hmm. it's a good contrast fives which is me and fives i want to say all fives love games card games board games all of it um i think we like either story driven games or collecting games the best um and like kind of like training games like i love settlers of Catan. um (laughs) it's a really good game Magic the Gathering, I have a full Magic the Gathering set, and it's kind of like the collecting and, ooh, what do I have, what do you have kind of thing. My dad um, was a collectible Magic the Gathering guy for a lot of my childhood. He's a fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as, like, the story-driven and collecting games, I love mainly RPGs, um, but I also love things like Slime Rancher. I find Slime Rancher very relaxing, and you basically just go around and collect these animals that are called slimes or like I will spend hours doing quests and like side quests in games where you just have to find stuff. Anything that's game. open world. Yes. Open world is magnificent. All right. I'll pass to you. Six. Um, clue. Little six detective hats on and escape <laughs> rooms. Although mm. I bet like, For some sixes, I bet escape rooms are horrible, though, because they go into panic mode. (laughs) Mm. It's like it's too real. But then I bet for other sixes, escape rooms are just like, Mm -hmm. they're shit. I'm looking at one of the answers we put down for number eight, but I think it also goes with six, so I'll put it here. Um, We had, um, I'm going to put team sports for sixes. Oh, yeah. Because both of my siblings were huge team sports players um, I see that I feel sixes. like I've never met a six that isn't in a team sport yeah <laughs> so or or hadn't played one previously growing up you know mm. yeah um. um here I'll give you a seven too because these were yours oh, okay I uh, yes seven so can confirm my partner is a seven and her game of choice is Candy Crush. I mean, also Dungeons and Dragons, but I think that's mostly because she's a writer. Um, but <laughs> I thought I'd put that down. Um, but then also, you know, I was thinking Sevens, their game of choice is the stock market. Speaking of which, my stocks did very well today. I thought they were going to do bad because everything like crashed in the morning, but then they did very well. And I'm up. <laughs> That's good. This, I heard the stock market was doing well. I don't yeah. I don't know anything about stocks. I might own some. I might not. I know mm. I have a bank account of something that's adulty, mm. but I don't know what happens with it. I mostly put my money there so that I never see it again. It <laughs> works out very well for my brain because then it doesn't exist. <laughs> um. Um, but I bet that sevens... Like, I have um, an uncle who I suspect is a seven who does has an app that is, like, m- like sort of very low stakes stocks market stuff. Like It's probably dogs. Robinhood, which is what I use. Yeah. So, um. like, the, um, you know, you, you just buy a couple of dollars in the morning and you sell it in the evening or something, right? Mm -hmm. And sort of that give and take of it. And he really is into, like, following the trends and stuff. And part of that's the five research. Mm -hmm. And part of that's also, like, the, like the the, you know, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a game. Um, And I think the high (laughs) stakes of it is kind of invigorating for sevens. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All right. So for eights, we think eights, like, first-person shooter games. Um... I also believe that eights are huge, were huge dodgeball people in school. I guarantee that one. Mm. Um, And I think a lot of them are specifically contact sports people, but sports in general. Some of your harder sports, like maybe lacrosse or hockey or, you know. 
I feel like for the first person shooter bit, it's not necessarily, a, it, I think it's more about like the culture around first person shooters than anything else, you know? Mm. An eight can be on a first person shooter and tell someone to fuck off, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, it's different than being on like Animal Crossing and telling someone to fuck off. <laughs> you know? Oh, it's probably left Fortnite. Yeah. Well, because it's the it's the environment around it is like you just get to kind of be as much of an asshole as you want to be, and that's except not saying that eights are assholes. That came out very wrong. What I'm saying is it's kind of like the way that New Yorkers are assholes, where mm-hmm. you're no longer an asshole because you're around a bunch of other assholes. Mm. And so eights just get to let out all of the aggression they want and not get judged for it. Mm. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'll let you take nines. Oh, nines, because I'm a nine. Nines like co-op games. Honestly, okay, I'm going to say I'm a very competitive person, and that's partially why competitive games give me anxiety, but also because conflict. So anything that's co-op, I love immediately. And also any of those sort of like mindless tap games where you just accumulate stuff, cookie clicker. You've called me out before on the show and cookie clicker constantly. I deleted it off my phone. I no longer play. (laughs) You did. (laughs) We would just be talking and I'd be tapping and I'd be like, I don't know why I'm tapping. You'd be like, you're stressed, Kaden, you're stressed. That's what nines play. <laughs> so why don't you um tell our uh, wonderful, wonderful listeners why we asked a game-specific question? So for those of you who don't know, um, there is an Enneagram game, and it is called Nine Shapes, and it was created by Enneagram and Life Coach Ashley Sikorsky. I hope I said that right. Um. But if you're looking for a nice, fun game to play and improve your Enneagram skills, look no further. Um, I will also have a link in the show notes um, for how you can purchase this um, to their website. So if you do, after this um, episode, want to buy it, um, just take a look at our show notes. Um, But yeah, so we thought we would kind of review the game, give you some of our thoughts. Um, so yeah, so I'll just jump right in with, um, what the rules are. Um, so basically it's a card game and what you do is you get, uh, two to 12 players together and you all take turns drawing cards and doing basically what those cards say. And so there are three types of cards. Um, There are the, I forget what she calls them. There's the free space cards and the the disruptor disruptor cards. Ooh, I cannot. Um, And then, I forget what she calls. Free space disruptor and there's learner cards. No, the learner cards are, so it comes with, um, if you don't know what the Enneagram is, it I'm just comes, looking at the bold things. Yeah, it, well, the the learner cards are not the gameplay cards because those are the cards that um, they, like, teach you um, about the Enneagram. So if you don't know anything about the Enneagram or would be playing with people who don't really know very well, there are some cards that could help you figure it out. Um, it gives you the centers, um, body types, heart types, explains all of that. Um, and, um, explains a little bit about the Enneagram. And then, so I think the other ones are called just It's just regular general play. play cards. Yeah. yeah, general play cards. So you've got the general play cards, you've got the free space cards, and the disruptor cards. So with, um, the general play cards, each card has a type, um, given to it. If you are that type... Um, then you have to answer one of the questions. There are two questions per card. Um, If you are in the same um, intelligence center, then you also have to answer that card. Um, But if you are not, then you have the option to answer one of the questions above or ask one to someone in the group. So that's the general play cards. Then the disruptor cards 
are generally a more physical thing that you have to do. Um, so one example of this is everyone stand and make the Enneagram circle, have each person briefly share what they noticed. And then the free space cards are all the same. And it's, what do you have to say? Use this turn to share a thought or ask someone a question. And so you basically just set um, a time limit and just kind of start, just kind of jump in, draw cards. Right. So <laughs> you reached out to the author, her, I'm guessing her self, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and included a little bit of some of what you mm -hmm. learned there. Um, yeah. Well, this isn't from, so I reached out originally when I was buying the games, because at first this was a Kickstarter, and told her we were going to be starting this, and then she was like, okay, cool, yeah, you can discuss this stuff. I pulled this other stuff from the website, oh, from though. The website. Yeah, okay. so she didn't uh, really give me much to say on here as of right now. We uh, did some internet stocking by yeah. Leah Patty. Yeah, so these um, are all off the website, um, but these are her thoughts about the card game. Would you like to read them? They're direct, they're direct sure. quotes. I can quote with my yes. dulcet tones. Okay, quote, Nine Shapes is a passion project which aims to help individuals connect using the frameworks of the Enneagram without falling into the trap of reducing our multifaceted, unique individual selves to a type on a personality framework. How do we simultaneously use this beautiful tool that many of us find life in while avoiding treating others like easily categorizable objects? The answer is simple. Conversation and active listening. Nine Shapes questions are exploratory and based on the nine types from the Enneagram, while still being general enough for anyone to get something out of playing the game. End quote. Yep. So that's the sales pitch version of it. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially there's a shit ton of cards with some questions on them and you get to ask your friends questions, which is the best part of having friends. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the questions are designed to be difficult for, very difficult for your type, kind of medium if they're in your intelligence center. And honestly, some of them are pretty easy if they're not for you. Um, right. Well, because it's, it's, you know, to quote John Mulaney, that's something I'm sensitive about. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very targeted. It's, it's um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what would be great, though? Playing this game with a bunch of people who didn't know what their Enneagram type was, and then... Um, seeing just which questions some some questions them. And seeing them which questions made them super defensive. <laughs> And then trying to type them based on how defensive they got. Oh, my God. That would be so fun. One day we'll get a group of, like, you know, like 12, 15 people together. And then we'll we'll do that. Just a bunch uh, of people who don't know anything about the Enneagram. We'll just I ask them random that. questions. <laughs> but, yeah. So, um, this game does have some pretty influential people kind of backing it and saying that it's good. So I've got some reviews from those people. Um, so Beatrice Chestnut said, quote, conversation is such a creative way to put the Enneagram out there so people can take it in in different ways. And then I don't know how to say this person's name. Um, I would guess Alon. Alon Benami. I guess I'm sorry, Alon, Alon or yeah. Elon, or yeah. your your name, person. Yeah. Elon Benami, uh, quote: Clearly, a lot of thought and care has gone into these cards. They move you deeper than typical Enneagram stereotypes into real and meaningful converse conversations. And then I really have no idea how to pronounce this guy's name or girl. Oh, I don't know. Okay, do you want me Their to take gender. a crack at it? Yes, please. Uranio Pace. Yes. Yeah, how do you, do you think that reads all right? Yes. Looks like a, 
<laughs> okay. Uh, Probably uh, not anywhere near how it is. Yes, I don't know. Um, so they said nine shapes is a great gateway into the Enneagram. A reminder that Enneagram invited playing and fun and not just uh, difficult inner work. Um, so, yeah. Um, we have both uh, played this game with several people. So I do have some uh, uh, takes from the people I've played with. Um, I played with a type three. And the type three said that her shape looks like a lizard and was very excited about that. Um, I can the see question, it. Although <laughs> the there's too many legs. There would be too many legs. I, but very it looks deformed. You know what, though? I said this as we were prepping today, and I stand by it. Type 2's shape looks like the fucking Nickelodeon sign. So, <laughs> Nickelodeon, copyright. Um, <laughs> like that. God damn, my childhood came back full force for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and uh, the three said that the questions are hard and introspective, and that the three liked it, so they can see what people like and kind of expect, and it kind of helps a three kind of judge the room. So I think a three would really like this game. Yeah. Um, the one I played with, the type one I played with, also really liked the game. Um, thought the questions were hard and introspective and pretty much had the same things to say. Mm -hmm. um, and I also played it with my partner, who is a two. And she said that um, she liked it, but we've only played it with each other. And it's not really as fun with only two people. No, you really no. need more to spice it up. Um, my takeaways from playing it, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't really have that many people to play it with is part of the problem. I live in, mm -hmm. in quarantine lockdown mode. Mm -hmm. Um, we had to play over Skype, so, <laughs> which was just I, me know, reading all the cards I would at them. <laughs> for sure recommend playing this with three or more people because playing it the one-on-one -on -one style was like not super great I think also though what I mentioned earlier in our conversation and I think maybe not yet on the stream um it would probably be really a lot better with people you were kind of surface friends with like trying to get to know but, like, enough that you were already invested in their answers and who they were as a person, but not so much that you know all of the answers already. Because just imagining playing this with, like, most of my friends. question or ask any question um, right but uh it can be that's another downside to just playing with one person mm -hmm. um I also didn't really like the free space cards very much I mean it's nice to be able to ask someone someone a question or something like that but because there was no variety 
amongst them, every time one kind of popped up, it was kind of just like a jolt in the game, and we would pretty much just redraw a card. Right. Um, and not really do anything with it. I gotta say, as a nine being asked, what do you have to say? My answer is always nothing. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. so I think the free space could have been a little better. Um, I think they could be a little more pointed. Um, I think it's trying to provide some of that flexibility that you're seeing, but you know, some of that flexibility could be provided in other ways. It's a very, um, basic, uh, like mechanic mechanism Mm -hmm. like system Mm -hmm. um not super sophisticated or complicated and that has its sort of downfalls and its benefits Mm -hmm. easy to learn how to play but it's not super interesting and it's not super like replayable either I don't think that I could play this game more than a few times with the same person before getting bored Mm -hmm. um Agreed. Also, um, because I've pretty much played this over Skype, um, because by the time I got this, this I got this in January, um, and then I had to ship one to you, so we all got them a little later, and so then February kind of hit, and it's pretty much been lockdown season for the vast majority of the time that I've had this game, so the Disruptor cards are not are definitely not good for Skype because some of them are like while you're in the room form the enneagram or change seats or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um so I have definitely a for this. Huh?
funny, but I was being completely honest. Um, and I think it's because, uh, A, that question is pointed out of five because I don't really find very many things miraculous. So it's very hard for me to find something miraculous. And I think I said something, f- what did I say? Food related? So it can be very funny. And I think if you involve alcohol and it just kind of loosens the tongue so that everyone is just saying what comes to mind as it comes to mind, I think that would make it a very funny game. In another world, what kind of absurd, uh, what type of absurd career do you imagine living out? Mm. Don't yes. tell me something as cliche as the circus. So, okay, sh- I was um, playing this and my one friend said tightrope walker. Um, my type one friend, she said that she would be a tightrope walker. You know what? I I feel like she does that every day, though. <laughs> that was her response. That was, She was like, I feel like I pretty much do that every day. And so I would just go ahead and go full force with it. I think in another world, my two possible ones would be archaeologist slash like Indiana Jones person just going full hard seven and disintegrating and just traveling um or um oh shoot what was my other one um oh I remember sex therapist ah I think those would be fun careers um I think in a not too distant world I pursued music more heavily and was a full-time jazz musician oh that would be good for you i do like that little did you know i play (laughs) jazz trumpet (laughs) (laughs) but yeah um i think that's kind of it for me that was all i really had to say about the game yeah okay so um let's kind of wrap up a little bit then Um, I have chosen our question of the month this month, unless you, you didn't say anything before, so, um. No, I, I, you need to explain this to me, though, because I don't know (laughs) if I really understand what's going on in this. (laughs) So, um, I was watching Good Mythical Morning, and they were, they had an episode where basically they sit on a poll and asks people, and ask people questions, and Rhett and Link had to guess what the majority of their fans said, and if they guessed right, They got to eat a delicious food. And if they guessed wrong, they had to eat a nasty food. Okay. And one of the questions that got asked, they answered, but I, it wasn't that I disagreed with their answer. It was, I disagreed with the reason that they answered that way. And they were very judgmental of people who answered a certain way. pair of magic glasses in the mail but they come with a warning if you put the glasses on you will see one future crime per day which you will be able to stop from happening but every night you will dream about one way worse crime that you weren't able to stop do you put the glasses on this feels like a question targeted at ones it kind of does or maybe um, a one made the question with a very clear idea about what the right answer was mm-hmm. and was like, this will be so easy. Everyone will get this. Mm-hmm. And then everyone else is like, fuck no. Mm-hmm. I get, so from Rhett, I get very strong one or six vibes from him. I don't even know who these people you are talking about are. That's true. Um, I don't I'm watch in. Ethical Morning. I don't know what that is. Is it a podcast? Is it a show? Is it a... Um, it is a YouTube show, um, and they put a show out every single morning, but they also now have a podcast out called Ear Biscuits, which I have listened to a couple more episodes, and that really kind of makes me think that Red is a type one. I have no idea what type link is. Maybe a seven. These are all very good names. Are they mm-hmm. pseudonyms? No. It's Rhett and Link, I believe, is short for Lincoln. Oh. 
Mm-hmm. Damn. Born for the stage. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I want to know what you think. I want to know if you side with me. I want to know what type you are. <laughs> Vindicate uh, Maddie. That's really what Vindicate me, asking. especially since I am going to give my answer to this question and why I think what I think. Um, because I'm very passionate about my answer. <laughs> I already know what I'm going to choose. Um, Email yeah. us your answers so that, you know, we can create some data. Mm-hmm. Um, and tweet at us. And yeah. once again, our email is anythinggoes at gmail.com. And our uh, Twitter is at anything goes. We are also on Discord, so join us there. The link to that is on our Twitter, um, or you can email us, and I will send you the link directly. Um, oh, Discord is cool. Come, mm-hmm. come, hang out on Discord with us. Come play think, Among Us. Do, what do you think? Do you, what do you think people do in Among Us is different Enneagram types? Ooh, that For is a me, good. For me, I just do tasks. I hate being the imposter. I just do tasks. That's what I'm there for. I love being I love- the imposter, and I am very sneaky about it. I actually, I got <laughs> my partner very good. Um, she, Maybe we do a, a, an Among Us on Discord sometime. That would be fun. I would love to do that. Um, but yeah, I just remembered in our last episode, I think we said we were going to announce our next series. Oh, yes. Okay. Would you like to do the honors? Sure. Now, our next episode is going to be another episode kind of like this, discussing another resource. Um, But for the new year, we are starting a new series. And the series is, um, it's going to be deep dives into all of the triads. So we're going to go through the harmonic triad, and we're going to go through the Hornevian triad, and we're going to go through the intelligence centers a little bit more. Um, and then there are a couple of them. We have full lists of them. So we're going to kind of go through them. We're going to break them down. Um, but yeah, and I will answer next week what the first group that we are doing. But yeah, get psyched for that. That'll be the new year. I don't know. We're going to, we're going to have to be diving into things that I've never even really gone that deep into before. I'm going to have to do Mm -hmm. research. Mm Mm-hmm. I am very um, passionate about the harmonic triad. Um, I think it is incredibly useful for determining your type. Because there have been times when I have been kind of like, you know, maybe I'm an eight. Because I am, I do get kind of aggressive. When I go to eight, I go to eight hard, you know. Um, and then there are times like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a four. And there have been times that I was like, well, maybe I'm just a seven. Um, and the triads really